Welcome in to DC On Screen, the podcast bringing you news and reviews of DC Comics Multiverse properties on film and television since 2015. I'm your host, David C. Robertson. I'm back in the saddle with my best pal and co-host, Jason Goss. Hello. Now, before we get into the new new, I did have an emergency episode earlier this week with F.E. Ophelders concerning the whole Henry Cavill not going to be Superman in Gunn's new movie that Gunn is writing, Kerfuffle. That little bit of nonsense that no one mm. paid attention to. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, James Gunn says it won't be an origin story, but it will be dealing with a younger Superman. Uh, I know you were super, super disappointed in this news, as was I. I'd love to get your take on that since you weren't able to join us for that, Jason. I mean, th- there were a lot of tears. Did you cry? No. Seriously? No. I mean, not uh. really. But <laughs> mostly because it was released you... at 9.30 our time, and I had to go to bed, and then I had to go to work the next day. Otherwise, yeah. I, I could. I, I joked with somebody at work. I was like, no, 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 no. In a perfect world, I'd be at home right now holding my puppy, sobbing, and watching Man of Steel. That would that would have mm-hmm. been my perfect day the next day. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the, the rest of the saga, because in that fantasy universe, I had an extra day to finish all the trilogies. Right. And I guess I would have watched Black Adam again just for that last scene. Oh, God. Why? Just, just watch the last scene. Nah, the movie was good. <laughs> Damn you all, the movie was good. It was all right. It was fine. <laughs> we went from good, all right, to fine. <laughs> that was a quick de-escalation. But no, no. That was that was a... <laughs> That was like here's my my front foot is the movie was good my back foot, which you will not unplant is the movie was fucking fine lay off. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I mean altogether now that I've had some time to think about it, I'll give you three three ideas. Okay. One, I think they couldn't afford Henry Cavill. You think that's what happened? I still think that's what happened. We talked about it briefly, uh, one day when I was driving to work, but um, I, I still think that's just. Ultimately, what happened is they couldn't afford Henry Cavill at his current rate with the current state of Warner Brothers. I think it's going to be it. Now, part of that is also going to be because you can't get Henry Cavill back in the fold mm-hmm. without getting every fucking everybody else in the in the fold. Like it, the moment you brought him back in, I think it was just going to be this albatross of when you get in Zack Snyder mm-hmm. and the two of them, even if it wasn't just one, the two of them. <laughs> Collectively, were completely unaffordable for a company that's you know down several billion dollars in debt. So I don't think ultimately they could do it. And I think James Gunn and Peter Safran had like a plan for if they could do it. That would have been fun. That was kind of already built into the baked into the universe they inherited. And then another plan entirely in case they couldn't. And I guess we're going with the second one. I mean, we don't know. You're you're conjecting, by the way, completely. Because according to James Gunn, the only thing, the only reason that Henry Cavill is not still Superman is because he's not the right age. I know. For what James Gunn is doing. So, and the more I think about it, the more I feel like. I mean, Cavill looks like he could be 20 if you wanted him to. No, don't be silly. (laughs) But. (laughs) Incidentally, uh, my wife's opinion, because I asked her similarly, like, all right, listen, if you had four years to build your universe, what would you rather do? Release five, somewhere between like $50 million and $250 million movies, or release two tent poles and stake your entire future on it? Which one would you do? And she said, I don't know. I would I would hire Henry Cavill. He's a snack. I said, cool. I got you. I feel you there. Mm-hmm. She just wants to see more of him. I mean. I was able to inform her that The Witcher showed his ass, and I'm pretty sure she's watching that right now. Okay. Did you tell her he's already quit that show and Liam Hemsworth is replacing him? I did, but I don't think she'd be super disappointed by that either. <laughs> so That's fair. Um, it's not going to ruin so her day either way. The more I think about it, the more I think, and again, this is conjecture. I think it makes sense, and maybe James Gunn is seeing it this way, to treat the DCEU, or if you want to call it such, the Snyderverse, uh, as sort of like the Fox X-Men universe or the Sony Spider-Man universe. It's always going to be there if you need it. Yeah. But at the same time, it's time to start the MCU proper or the DCU proper in this case. And 
uh, build out what you're going to build out. And we all know that the multiverse is a huge thing in DC. They started that shit. Um, even in the stuff that Gunn has uh, shared with everyone, the the image of Batmite with all the different uh, iterations of Batman, uh, the beloved iterations from uh, TV and film. Uh, I mean, it, one of the things that cracks me up is you keep saying, or you said right age, and I've seen that too. It's just he keeps posting Kingdom Come photos. <laughs> like I know, I know. He doesn't keep. He posted one. <laughs> oh, I've seen two. I think. Um, but I'm. And don't get me wrong. No, I'm, you I'm, keep thinking that you keep thinking that justice picture from the Alex Ross justice cover is from Kingdom Come and is not. Yeah. We had this discussion last week. We did. Okay. But even then it's still like that it's not he's gonna age him older. It's not gonna be like Yeah. It the the point was that he's planning something, not that we're gonna do a Kingdom Come. But still, that's mm-hmm. the kind of thing that uh, you know, a few years from now that might still be in the future. And okay, I'm down. I had well, yeah. all right. I, I was going to bring up three points. One was I, I still think it was financially motivated, just because that, fuck that studio's so out of money right now. Um, and yes, I understand James Gunn has plans, but I still think he could have gone either way with it, depending on what was available. He could, but also if you're James Gunn and you're being given the reins, why would you want to be saddled any more than you have to be by the Snyderverse? Uh, the Snyderverse slash Hamadaverse, because that's what it is. It's Completely. both of them. Well, that's uh, my point with like, if you keep Snyder, you have to eventually get Zack Snyder. Or, sorry, if you keep uh, Cavill, you have to eventually get Zack Snyder because like we we have expectations. I, I think that's possibly the best thing they could do is scuttle the fucker. Well, and just Gun- start back from fresh. Gunn did say, though, that they talked about exciting possibilities. Now, see, this, that's what I'm thinking. Like, you know, in the same way that uh, the Sony Spider-Man movies and elements of the Fox X-Men movies have made their way into the MCU, I don't necessarily think it's beyond the realm of possibility that we could get sort of a crisis situation. Oh, yeah. No, uh, crisis is, you know, is where I'd put my hopes right now if you were trying to see him return. Like I said, if he, if he, I mean, he showed us that picture of Batmite with the different iterations of Batman, uh, from the different movies and TV series. Um, and on the emergency episode, I conjected that possibly that's, uh, how he ends Peacemaker is like Batmite is the big bad. And he's just like, mm, by the way, you know, just fourth wall the shit and just do the, do might fall from, uh, Brave and the Bold. Mm-hmm. I can now. Do that. But, I mean, part two of what I was suggesting is, if, let's go straight conspiracy theory with it. Mm-hmm. Like, one of the problems with Black Adam's performance mm-hmm. was that, like, you were supposed to go see that movie on week one and go, holy shit, they brought back Cavill and go, it, it was supposed to be legs for week two or mm-hmm. three or whatever. Well, that got uh, that got fucked up. It got leaked, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying that was determinant of the, the final figures here, but like it affected it. Less people saw it than would have. Uh, how much fun would it be? And this was, uh, this one's wild conjecture. How much fun would it be if they were actually doing all this just to literally bury it so far that when he shows up again, we actually didn't see it coming this time. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Um, you'd have to respect the move if it was, if it was happening now. Yeah. I would respect that for move, the record. I of. do not think that's what's happening. I don't think that is either. You know, someone was uh, asking Gunn, like, please tell me you didn't just, like, use Cavill to try to get more people to go see Black Adam. And Gunn wouldn't have been the person to do that. (laughs) Gunn said, that was before I even got here. (laughs) It's like... like, He literally wasn't on the drop. And that's, like, something that's very, very... Like, people are just like, hashtag fire James Gunn. Like right now is trending at like something like twenty four thousand as we're recording. Yeah, I'm sure twenty three point six thousand tweets. At the fire moment. him for something he didn't. Hashtag do yet. fire James Gunn. Well, he did choose to not use Henry Cavill, but I mean, at the same time, he's in an impossible still, situation. And here's why: there's a lot of at impossible the, situations. At the end of Zack Snyder's Justice League, Lois is pregnant. Now, I somewhat halfway jokingly told Effie, I was like, ooh, 
He just said Superman. No, I like your theory. I keep thinking though when he says younger Superman, because he's implying it at least that he's yeah. going to go with John Kent or John. Uh, yeah, what if he's John, John Kent? But yeah, like oh, I don't think he gonna, is. <laughs> what's going to really piss people off is knowing Gunn. He will actually make him buy, as Tom Taylor has recently in the books. Oh yeah, why and, wouldn't you? Oh, you, you dear can't God. walk that back now. No, oh dear God, the internet will fucking kill itself. It's going to be hilarious. Bring it on. Yeah. I don't I don't think they are. I think he's doing classic. I think he's doing proper Clark. He'll do and proper think, Clark probably. But And think about this. What is one of the big, like, I, I don't know how you, like, construct a, a DC Universe movie slate without, like, eventually thinking about Crisis or something very similar. Mm-hmm. And when you look at that comic, what were the what were the two biggest elements of Crisis on Infinite Earths? You had the proper mainstream DCU Superman, and you had an older Superman from a previous Earth, from the Golden Age or whatever, who had white on his, in his on his temples. Yeah. How do you not bring Cavill in for that? Like, well, I mean, I have to age him up. Actually, <laughs> Chris. I mean, I'm just of saying, Chris. Chris Reeve is dead. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. Dean Kane is, uh, hell. What's funny is I think Brandon Routh is actually older than Henry Cavill. <laughs> Maybe crazy. How but many people I, play this know. person in this in real time right now. Like him. I know Tyler Hecklin. Yeah. They're, they're all like what in their thirties, early forties. Tom Welling. Tom Welling. Oh, yeah. Welling actually is probably the oldest Superman right now. Yeah. If I was, well, damn it. I'm not going to the internet, but that's my bet. If I had to pick one. Mm hmm. But, you know, I'm thinking, like, you know, let let Gunn, I'm, yes, I want, see, the thing is, though, is, like, I was thinking about it, and I said, you know what, if Cavill comes back, if he came back, I would be wanting Zack Snyder back. That's Period. kind of part of my point one, or, I know, of my thing, is, like, I think that's tied in, is the affordability of both. But if you're James Gunn, and you are friends with Zack Snyder, because he is. They are, yes. And, by the way, Zack Snyder, and, 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 and nobody's saying best friends. I don't, you know, fr- but they would have lunch together for God's sake. Let's yeah. put a pin on that. At so least. I don't think Zach would be like begrudging of James wanting to build out his own thing. No. And I genuinely think that when Cavill says we had a nice discussion and, and people need to be able to rebuild or build things like I think that's probably the point he made. Mm-hmm. I think that was the substance of the conversation was like, look, we can't do it. A certain- this is what I'm saying. I, I think. There were barriers in place and Gunn went the other way with it because it's like, man, I could try to scrap together as best I can with the few resources you have right now because cash flow is a real problem right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I genuinely think they couldn't make it work or if he could, it would have been a long shot. Or yeah. option two, as much as it sucks for all of us and dear God, I, this is the part where I said, you know, there were tears. It's like, man, I, I haven't minded over the years. Not thinking Cavill would return because you know things come and go. It's the whiplash did hurt though. I, that yeah, that sucked. That that that's the worst part. But <sighs> the you decision know. there. But like I think the substance of that conversation they had was going to be: listen, I really need to be able to rebuild this universe a certain way, and I mm-hmm. wouldn't mind including you at some point going forward. But we've got to be able to build this so that we can actually keep it on its feet, right? And, and Cavill think- would understand that. I think there so is Snyder. so would Snyder, and I think that there is knowing the way Gun does things so far. I could very well see him saying, "Look, man, we got money problems. We got to like actually start building out a thing, and let's do this. I'm gonna start my own DC universe. Momoa's probably gonna be Lobo here. Let's you know, brand new Superman. Let's get away from the Snyder Hamada of it all." Yeah. But once this is established, once this is making money and it's closer to where Warner Brothers wants it, they could start slipping in buildups to something else. Like they could start slipping in buildups to Crisis. They oh, could so they could do like a, a Justice League miniseries I don't, with Zack Snyder. They could do that's the, something like that. And when I said three points, point three for me is here's where my real hope rests right now. Mm-hmm is that he does the reboot. And he's got his mm-hmm. four years. I want him to do the five movie plan instead of the two, like I talked about. Like, don't yeah. put all your eggs in there. Just 
try a few things and and he is he is actually a talented writer and director like he'll probably be able to make it work yeah but do the hard reboot man fire everybody like let gal gadot's thing expire let aquaman play itself out flash you can do whatever the hell you want with because flash is a multiversal character anyway Mm -hmm. there are all kinds of things you can do but you can take basically everybody in that classic you know zsjl shot Mm -hmm. and do what you will with it but let it die like completely let it die do your own thing do the 20 years before version of everything and then fuck it like let that build up Five, six yeah. years from now. That's like once you've got the company back on <laughs> decent right. feet. Once once cash flow is not a fucking daily issue. Once once you've got it back in, in the right direction, then you go to Snyder and say, listen, we actually do want to do Snyder Cut 2. Yeah. Then, and, you know. When you can afford everybody. And those people will still probably be wanting to do it because those people are all really invested in that property. And I, you could probably pay them less at that point because. If you, especially if you do it as a series, like a mini like series said. or something, yeah. yeah. But you do know, four episodes on whatever the, the hell is, HBO Max is called at the time. Yeah, and the other, well, I, th- I think they're talking about just calling it Max. But at the uh, same time, you know, from twenty twenty one, it's supposed to be, you know, Justice League two was supposed to be like five years in the future. Uh, you know, so save on makeup. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'll be older. <laughs> yeah, um, I yeah I man. Well, I, actually, <laughs> Dark Side did say, uh, "What ready the Armada will use the old ways. The old ways take some fucking time to travel." Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's fun. The old ways. Yeah, <laughs> stars are very far from each other. If anyone doesn't know, mm-hmm. and when they're not, by the mm-hmm. way, that is a very violent process. Yeah. So I still think. I'm still, ho- I, I, I still believe, let's say it that way. James Gunn is our best shot at getting the, the closure of the Snyder verse. I really do. Um, but at the same time, we, we need to stop, you know, well, I'm, I haven't been, but we need to stop being a dick to James Gunn <laughs> for a second and support what they're trying to do here. <sighs> I mean, you have effectively two choices. There, there's a fork in the road if you're a fan of these properties. You can do the boycott thing and just say I'm out. And you mm-hmm. know what? After all these years, I totally get it. I really do. Yeah, yeah. Warner Brothers has dicked around. They fucked. Like, I saw somebody post like a picture of Henry and just said like This is the most. This is the most wasted opportunity in the history of Warner Brothers. I don't disagree. They should have done something years ago. We shouldn't be talking about Man of Steel two now. We should have been talking about. We should be talking about like, do we want to do another take on the epi- <laughs> like another episode talking about Man of Steel two that was released in twenty eighteen or some shit? Like, the- it is two thousand twenty two. To me, nine years should, later, <laughs> than the we should. To me, we should be almost exactly where we are with someone else rebooting the franchise. Honestly, having done all it, of the films ha- originally in the slate, ha- having done the original films in the slate. You know, that was Zach's plan in the first place was to do, you know, get through Justice League 3 and then reboot. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it's not. No one's wrong about Henry Cavill being a wasted opportunity. Uh, that's that's going to be right no matter how you slice this, I think. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be a matter of like, all right, well, accepting that this was wasted. How do you how do you move forward? And like I said, you've got two choices. You can give up or you can just hope for the best and I'm going to go with the hope for the best thing. Cause that's what Superman would want. That's all I got. Yeah. And God damn it. It's, um, it's what else, what else do you really do? Like, I know. All right. Let's, uh, that let's being said, it'll be funny if a year from now we're like, all right, so this is our final episode. We have given up completely. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, but we do have an they entire year. Snyder verse as Superman. Snyder slash Hamada verse stuff coming. Yeah. Um, again, though, we don't know what they're doing exactly. And I think like, if we don't go to these movies coming out this year, th- you know, if, if there's just, just no audience turnout, it's not going to look great for any kind of revival later down the line. I mean, you look at DC, we've got Keaton back for the flash, right? Yeah. We've had animated revivals of Batman 66, as well as an appearance in the CW show crisis on infinite earths. 
We had a, a scene of Birds of Prey, for God's sake. Like, the most damn you're canceled quick CW show ever. Like, we've gotten reprisals from so much of this stuff. I don't think... I mean, for all we know, well, James Gunn is gone and in 10 years. And, you know, there's somebody else wanting to do revive something else somewhere along the line. You know, we here's here's one way to look at it. Remember when, you know, the banks were too big to fail, so to speak? Mm-hmm. Well, in some capacity, think about it this way. If I'm not saying we have to go see these movies or anything, I, I'm just saying, like, one, <laughs> I'll... Uh, not all, a fair amount of the people saying like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, are going to be too curious the day it actually comes out and they'll still go see it. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause yeah, there's a part of me for sure. That's like, man, I'm, I'm emotionally fucking done right now. Yeah. I'm still going to see these movies. Um, it's just that we're in a mourning period and these things take time. So we have again, two directions. Like one, what if you don't see any of this? It, it like you you don't watch this you don't watch Gunn's first actual movie which I guess maybe Superman um, maybe we don't know he says he's writing and directing maybe but or, um, anyway like he maybe he's writing he doesn't know who's directing well he said he was already already writing so that's why I'm saying it might be earlier in the slate but anyway uh, but pure guess there but like what if you don't see Flash or Aquaman two the only two that are well even Blue Beetle because fuck it that's still in there right. So what Mm -hmm. if you just say, fuck it, I'm not seeing anything. Well, it's not that you're going to like change the course of the films. You're just going to make Warner Brothers think that no one's going to watch anything. Gunn won't Mm -hmm. even get a chance. You're completely fucked then. Yep. Like pulling support at that point isn't, it is making a point and it's a valid point that they fucked up and they have. Mm -hmm. It's not that like, but it's not actually helpful. Like you're not actually going to change things in a way that's positive you're just going to change things in a way that's deletive. Like you're, you're just going to take away the possibility of a future. It, like we'll end up in a situation where it's like Keaton and the Tim Burton films where it's like 10 years later, we actually get another Batman film mm-hmm. or how many years between the Superman films. Like it, It's not going to be that you're going to, it, it's not corrective. Whereas like if you actually do support these things in so far as you can and dear God, please, I understand. I, I, I know what you're feeling. Me too. But like, Mm -hmm. if you actually support these things a little bit or stay with it just to see what's going on at least, which is really what I think I would ask if anyone's going to ask me, then you're going to give it enough chance to stand and see if it stands. That's all. And we still don't know if he's doing a total reboot. We don't know what he's doing. Not completely. And I don't know. I like Gunn as a, you know, writer, director, whatever, but dude, he could fall on his face. This could be the time where he, even if he's done good work, before this could be the time where he just completely fucks up and it's terrible i don't know no i've made a lot of good food before i've made some fucking terrible food uh, occasionally Mm-hmm. um getting on into the new updates though uh let's see uh <laughs> perfect shots 247 on twitter asked gun do you still intend to make projects about minor characters in your new dc slate or are you going to focus on the big household names before doing that and James Gunn says we'll be focusing on the most well-known and some lesser-known characters simultaneously. That sounds fine to me. That sounds good. I got no interest. Uh, uh, no, no interest. I got no problem with that. Uh, <laughs> I have no interest in that. Garrick 3D. I don't on want Twitter. you to focus on minor or major characters. <laughs> yeah, only medium. Only the worst. Uh, Garrick 3D on Twitter said the cold indifference to letting Henry Cavill go and tweeting about everything, but. Is truly CEO role worthy? I couldn't do it, but I have a heart. And Gunn says, I am anything but cold about it. I sat down in person with Henry yesterday, and we had a very open and honest and respectful discussion. We've communicated since, and he and I are all good. And I said what I needed to say yesterday. Not sure what else you'd like me to say. And uh, Lawrence Fury Zero. going to be a hard conversation for everybody involved. Yeah. Lawrence Fury Zero says, James Gunn, when you show us the movie coming out, will you explain why Cavill is getting recast, please? And Gunn says, as I said yesterday, it is very simple. He's a different age. Yeah. Uh, 
Yasser Siddiqui 5 says, is Batman going to be a big part of the DCU going forward or is he going to be kept for Matt Reeves only? And James Gunn says he's a big part of the DCU. And as we talked about last episode, um, he has debunked the rumor that Matt Reeves' Batman is going to be the DCU Batman. This is going to be a completely new Batman, I imagine. Oh, yeah, he, he bitch slapped that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, <laughs> interestingly, like, interestingly, uh, according to Hollywood Reporter, Gunn's new Superman movie is not going to have an impact on the Ta-Nehisi Coates, J.J. Abrams' black Superman film that is coming out. Coates is still working on the script as of right now. I'll see that one. I don't know. I, I need to see some progress on that one because that's been, that feels know, like it's right? been three and a half, four years, man. I know. It, it hasn't been, but it's, it's, it's been like a it year. It feels like a while. Anyway. Yeah. Um, like, I forget that one's happening, but damn. Um, and <laughs> THR is reporting, quote, the sun setting of Cavill's time with Superman was the clearest indication yet that Gunn and Saffron are mounting a substantial overhaul of DC, a reboot that will cut significant, if not most, ties to the previous regimes that handled DC movies for Warner Brothers. Cavill also shot a cameo in The Flash, one of our one of four DC movies set to release in 2023, but sources say that cameo, along with that of Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, is now being cut, given that the studio chose to not go forward with director Patty Jenkins' version of Wonder Woman 3. Look, we don't know if this source is accurate. We don't, but it would make sense. It would. I'm deeply in a time where I don't care for the words sources say. Me too. But um, uh, that would track. That really would track. I, I still predict that I think I think Gal's gone. What do you think? I, um, I, I think she's gone unless there is some sort of crossover event that happens between universes. Then yeah, I, but if if I mean in the same sense that Cavill's gone is what I'm asking. Yeah, I guess. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. Hey, Dave, popping in from a later date uh, after we recorded, things blew up just a little bit. There's a lot of bullshit floating out there uh people saying james gunn said this he hates snyder fans the rock is gone gal gadot is gone of course i shall do my best to go over what was actually said here uh so on december 19th james gunn posted this to his instagram and twitter and i assume mastodon though i don't really pay attention to that he says one of the things peter and i were aware of when we took the job as heads of dc studios was a certain minority of people online that could be, well, uproarious and unkind, to say the least. Our choices for the DCU are based upon what we believe is best for the story, and best for the DC characters who have been around for nearly 85 years. Perhaps these choices are great, perhaps not, but they are made with sincere hearts and integrity, and always with a story in mind. No one loves to be harassed or called names. But to be frank, we've been through significantly worse. Disrespectful outcry will never, ever affect our actions. We were aware there would be a period of turbulence when we took this gig, and we knew we would sometimes have to make difficult and not so obvious choices, especially in the wake of the fractious nature of what came before us. But this means little to us in comparison to our jobs as artists and custodians in helping to create a wide and wonderful future for DC. So first of all, one of the things I continue to see misunderstood here is that James referred to Zack Snyder fans as a certain minority of people. He didn't say that. He was referring to a certain minority of people online that could be uproarious and unkind. The fact is he's being kind here. He's saying the bullies are the minority, not Snyder fans, because as I well know, being a Snyder fan, we're not all name calling bullies. The second bit I see twisted his, uh, his saying fan opinion means little to them in comparison to their jobs. 
That is not what he's saying. He's saying the period of turbulence, the assault of the bullies, having to make difficult and not so obvious choices is not so bad because they get to be the artists and custodians of building out the future of DC. In other words, the good outweighs the bad. <sighs> His statement was not entirely met with hatred. Um, <laughs> Michael B. Jordan on Instagram, you know, responded with like clapping emojis, uh, DC Burren says, "Happy, excited, super excited for you. I have full faith you'll make something incredible and unique. Dan Harmon of Community and uh, Rick and Morty says, your first eight voicemails are me pitching Luthor movies. And James says, I like that each one is different. <laughs> uh, speaking of Lex Luthor, Michael Rosenbaum of Smallville responded, perfect. So, you know, there, there are lots of people, uh, giving very kind words over on Instagram, not really the case with Twitter, but that's to be expected, I suppose. Um, <laughs> of course, over on Twitter, Ray Fisher, cyborg, either in a fit of paranoia or desperation for relevancy, decided to burn another bridge. Ray, uh, quote tweeted, what James said and says the way James Gunn uses fake grace on Twitter is really funny. Him going to bat for Joss Whedon pseudo apologizing for it and then deleting it immediately before taking his new DC job is not refusing to apologize for toxic behavior seems to be a job requirement for WB slash DC shrugging emoji. And James Gunn responded, all my tweets automatically delete every few months, Ray. It has nothing to do with my tweets to you. So honestly, Ray's actions here are grossly irresponsible. He isn't in the know. I don't know if he's hurt that James hasn't called him yet or what, but Ray knows he has a huge platform of angry twerps ready to bully gun at his righteous command, except hilariously, it mostly backfired on him because his thread is full of people saying, Hey Ray, love ya this ain't it, man. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I hate that Ray decided to do that because generally I have agreed with his stances, but not here y'all. Anyway, as happens after these statements, uh, gun answered a bunch of questions. I found many of them to be of interest. Mr. Society Vivo asked, is blue beetle still going to be released next year? Gun says, Oh Yes. McLean W says, who knows if it's true, but recasting all the main DCEU characters, but keeping some will be interesting. How is Peacemaker and Suicide Squad characters slash actors live on, but the others don't, particularly when the particularly when they have all interacted together? And Gunn says, I keep seeing posts with this untrue theory. We're not recasting everyone except the Suicide Squad. The BS boy says, cannot wait to see what you're cooking up. That being said, the move to boot Cavill and Godot, especially after they had announced their return, does not inspire confidence. Gunn says, I'm not sure where you're getting that we booted Gal. So from this, it seems like Gunn did not boot Gal. Maybe she returns, maybe not. But if not, it seems like it may be her call. Also, we do know that Zachary Levi has very recently said the rumors of his casting was untrue. He says, we all Gucci. Um, <laughs> and he was one of the people who uh, responded to Gunn's statement on Instagram and said, amen. So it's very interesting times, y'all. Uh, Gunn says his costume designer, Judiana Markovsky, will be joining him for his DC projects as well. She worked on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and... Uh, I'm, I'm down with that. Gunn reiterates that his Superman film won't be an origin story. He's not meeting the major characters for the first time. He's merely younger. Chris Exclusive says, what is your absolute dream project uh, now that you're co-running the studio? Gunn says, we're making many of them. Mr. K on Twitter says, hey, James, you and Peter must be having tons of fun planning things out for the DCU. Were any of the animated DC shows like Justice League Unlimited and Young Justice an inspiration for you when planning out this universe? James says, definitely, which is good to hear for me because I love Young Justice and I love Justice League Unlimited even more. The uh, DCAU canon from Batman the Animated Series to Justice League Unlimited is my favorite uh, on-screen interpretation of the DC Comics universe. 
So that sounds great for me. Uh, Jared OJ the Goose Man on Twitter says, any plans for Deathstroke in the DCU? James, G- James Gunn says, could be. Matt is a dork, says, how many projects will be announced in January, more or less? And James says, a few. Darth DZL on Mastodon says, as long as the studio doesn't override you and your directors at every turn, I, for one, have confidence that you'll actually be making decisions for the DCU that I can get on board with. In my opinion, worth exactly nothing. It was studio interference that derailed the previous attempt at a DCU. It wouldn't surprise me to learn that Mr. Johns was quite frustrated. Uh, James responds, the position is different than it was with Zach, etc. Peter and I are the heads of DC studios. The only studio interference would be from us. So about this time, the rock decides to post this on his Instagram and Twitter. My passionate friends, I wanted to give you a long awaited black Adam update regarding the character's future in the new DC universe. James Gunn and I connected and black Adam will not be in their first chapter of storytelling. However, DC and Seven Bucks have agreed to continue exploring the most valuable ways Black Adam can be utilized in future DC Multiverse chapters. James and I have known each other for years and have always rooted for each other to succeed. It's no different now, and I will always root for DC and Marvel to win and win big. You guys know me, and I have very thick skin, and you can always count on me to be direct with my words. These decisions made by James and DC leadership represent their vision of DCU through their creative lens. After 15 years of relentless hard work to finally make Black Adam, I'm very proud of the film we delivered for fans worldwide. I will always look back on the fan reaction to Black Adam with tremendous gratitude, humility, and love. We did great. To my very passionate and vocal Black Adam superhero genre fans, I love you, thank you, and I will always listen to you and do my best to deliver and entertain you. And, and you know, happy holidays and all that shit. So, <laughs> James Gunn responded to that and said, Love The Rock and am always excited to see what he and Seven Bucks do next. Can't wait to collaborate soon. I'm, so, I'm seeing a lot of people saying that, like, the rock is gone. The rock is not a James Gunn canceled the rock. He didn't. He says their first chapter of storytelling won't have black Adam. They're exploring the most valuable ways. Black Adam can be utilized in future DC multiverse chapters. These words were chosen carefully. DC multiverse chapters, which leads into the next uh, question. James Smith 7034 on Twitter says, are you open to producing any Elseworlds DC projects that aren't set in the DCU? James Gunn says that is actively happening. Now, I don't know. Maybe they're ta- he's talking about Joker. Maybe he's talking about the Batman. Certainly those two qualify for Elseworlds, right? But if those two are already happening, why can't something else? I'm very interested to see what he's doing here. I'm very, very interested. I'm not ready to, to, to burn him in effigy yet. Anyway, that's all from this part of the timeline. Back to those other two guys. Um, weirdly, Black Adam, which is now streaming on HBO Max, uh, Flix Patrol is reporting that they're a third-party viewer tracker. And they're reporting that Black Adam is, like, number one on Max, on HBO Max, like... It like knocked the uh, that movie Amsterdam that's been on the top that's been number one for te- like ten days. It knocked mm. it off, and H- Black Adam is now the number one streamer streamer on Max. <laughs> Lovely, a small also, consolation after all, though. You know there was a big kerfuffle earlier this week about like people were uh, reporting like The Rock unfollowed Warner Brothers. And DC Comics on Instagram. And uh, he didn't. <laughs> I mean, first, I'd like to know if that was true. And second, it could be funny if it was true. Yeah, like, yeah, it was all over the place. Everyone was like, oh, our boy is tired. He's sick of this shit. And he wants James Gunn fire. And all Rock, The Rock eventually came back with was, this is completely untrue. I never followed them on Instagram. <laughs> and if you go to Twitter, he still follows them on Twitter. He's, it's not. <laughs> yeah. 
Dude, he's he fought for this film for like twenty years. I don't think he's done just because Cavill's out. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of people wanting in to to do things on the DCU, though, uh, Michael Rosenbaum, Lex Luthor from Smallville, mm-hmm. recently said he he would like to play Lex Luthor in James Gunn's DCU. I wouldn't fight it if he was a good one. He was a good one. He's one of my favorites. Um, I don't think it would be smart. No. Not to include that universe, no. Yeah, no, well, I don't. Partly because the inclusion of, of that universe involves, and you know, thanks to <laughs> thanks to Criers, <laughs> Luthor <laughs> mm-hmm. involves so much more. Like, I don't, I don't know if you could do that and still tell. Like, that would complicate things a lot as far as storytelling, but... <laughs> Yeah, I think it would just be a distraction, yeah. honestly. It would just make people go, oh, wait a minute, why is Tom Welling not a Superman? <sighs> you don't want that. Get, if you're going to reboot it, get somebody new to play Lex. And if you do a Crisis on Infinite Earths, yes, absolutely, grab Rosenbaum and have he and Cryer and all the people who will come back play Lex. He didn't, Different versions. He didn't come back when he had the chance, though. Like, as far as I understand, like back when there was a Crisis event, it... He was one of the people that was uh, called, but he didn't. He didn't. He didn't do it. I don't know what the details mm. were, but he says he got a call, but it didn't work out. Uh, yeah, I think that was due to scheduling, possibly. But um, I'm not saying there was anything um, ominous there. But yeah, it, I don't know. What's funny, also, and this is the ominous part, is like I'd love to play Lex Luthor again, dude. You didn't want to play it to begin with. That's why you were out of the last couple seasons. I mean, he just got tired of being in freaking Vancouver, sixteen-hour days playing Lex Luthor, man. Oh, I, mean, I he completely left in season agree. Seven. That was a shit show, <laughs> but like, and, he, and he still came back for the final episode. Like he did, he did. Yeah, he did uh, reprise the role, but still, like, <sighs> I don't know. On the one hand, I'm like, man, you had your chance. On the other hand, I'm like, yeah, I'd like to see you again. The thing is, like, I I would have to like I would love to see him show up somewhere along the line someday as Lex and I would absolutely like just he would have to yell at either to Miss Tessmacher or Mercy or whoever his little assistant is the same way he yells at uh, his producer on inside of you yes that would be good <laughs> um, I forget the name but I know the yell uh, yeah I know that chirp yeah it's like damn it yeah um <laughs> <laughs> it's some weird like I'm angry right this second but I love you kind of yell <laughs> yeah However you describe uh, that. Meanwhile, Stephen Amell <laughs> had mm. an interview and said, uh, they asked him if he'd want to be a part of the, of the new DCU. And he says, if I'm going to, if I'm going to be a part of the DCEU, I'd probably just want to play the green arrow in there. I don't know. I mean, are they still separate? Didn't we have two flashes in the Arrowverse at one point? I don't know. We'll see whatever they want. If I had to pick one, <laughs> I'd pick my own movie only because there's so many things that selfishly I would like to do with arrow that we didn't necessarily do on TV. Um, and then they, they asked him if he would play anyone else in the franchise. And he says, Oh, just find me a good Batman villain that no one's played yet. And I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> it was just find me some, <laughs> you know what he really wants to do though, is escape from Arkham. Like, probably that's that's what he wants to do i think probably i think he even said that somewhere but i'm confident that that's what he wants to do maybe so uh that is all of movie news Mm. we're gonna hit a quick break and be back with television in just a second do you need to go anywhere i'm gonna work up one good burp real quick that's all i had planned okay okay we are back And before getting into TV news, I do want to thank our patrons over on patreon.com. Every patron gets every episode ad free. $5 patrons get that plus bonus episodes from time to time. Like the first part of my Sandman comic review series that I recently posted. I did that with Scott McClellan of DC Squadcast and Vodka Stream and several other shows. Plus, being a patron is the best way to support this podcast. Absolute best way. And to join the ranks of the hallowed patrons go to patreon.com slash dc on screen all right let's do this tv news man let's 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 stick this pig um hashtag show that hashtag show broke the news that they were recasting lex luthor for superman and lois Mm -hmm. 
uh, looking for a white male in his late forties who is hell bent on destroying those who he feels are responsible for ruining his life. A chilling businessman who's rogue and amoral. And John Cryer said, since this news is about a new Lex Luthor casting call for Superman and Lois, that means I'm not going to be playing him this time around. Godspeed to the guy who gets it. It's a terrific show. So we're, we're out a, uh, a beloved Luthor and a beloved Superman this week. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I really did want to see Cryer do Superman and Lois, honestly. Yeah, I was looking forward to that if it was going to be a thing, but I guess not. So did you, I doubt you have, but they they released a a first trailer for the final season of The Flash. And I would have shared it with you, but it didn't really show a whole lot. Like, I saw it and I was like, I don't even, it's just like Barry running and stuff. Like, I don't know what to do with that. I mean... Yeah, Barry will be will be fast in the last season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am interested. I'm if not excited, I'm intrigued. Because we know that uh Javicia Leslie, who played Ryan uh on Batwoman, she's she's gonna be in the final season of The Flash as Batwoman. And now Eric Wallace is saying that they're bringing back Nicole Maines from Supergirl as Dreamer. Mm-hmm. And he says, as Supergirl fans ourselves, all of us here on The Flash are super excited to have Nicole join Team Flash for a one-off adventure as we put together our final season. Nicole is a fantastically talented actress, and I'm so happy she's agreed to be part of a very special episode nine, uh, sorry, season nine episode where I get to cross off one of my Arrowverse bucket list team-ups, having two fantastic reporters, Iris West Allen and Nia Nall, investigate their own very bizarre and frightening mystery. So... That's that's interesting to me. Like I like that they're bringing in people from other shows, and I'll be really pissed if they don't get those legends in there. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I don't. I don't disagree. I mean, I, having not watched it, what you've told me is that Legends had an unsatisfactory ending. It did. Um, and one of the reasons I haven't watched is because the bit I did see is that it was relatively satisfactory. So I've kind of kept a placeholder in my head, but. Mm-hmm. The uh, well, it was weird. Like, the penultimate episode was basically like the best series finale they could have done for the show, and then they did another episode and left <laughs> it on a cliffhanger. That's <laughs> uh, no, that's poor planning, but they also, I, I wonder, like, one of the things I said when Legends was canceled was like, hey, it's fine, they've still got Flash, you can wrap up whatever you want on a show like that. Mm-hmm. Well, Flash wrapping up too, so like, can you? I mean, Supergirl had a you know, had a fine finale, yeah. I guess. Was, but I mean, can you get everybody at the legends though, in this environment where you don't need everybody. We just have like Sarah show up. Just need, <laughs> just, well, that's, yeah. that's my point. We're, we're in a cost cutting environment. How many people yeah. you need to make this work? You can just have Sarah show up and be like, Oh yeah, we're still flying. I don't know. <laughs> just have Sarah show up and be like, no, we're good. Thanks. Peace. And, yeah. and by the way, Sarah would actually do the like, peace out, bro. Mm hmm. All right, so we got one piece, of, one last piece of news here. Uh, at the last SDCC, uh-huh. there was an announcement that uh, DC animated movies was going to be including Justice League X R W B Y Superheroes and Huntsmen Part One, and uh, THR has the voice cast. Uh, I don't know what R W B Y is. Uh, you you lost me. I know. So it says uh, Superman, Batman. It makes more sense. Uh, I got nothing. Well, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Cyborg, Green Lantern, and Vixen are transported to the strange world of Remnant and find themselves turned into teenagers. Meanwhile, Remnant heroes Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang must combine forces with the Justice League to uncover why their planet has been mysteriously altered before a superpowered Grimm destroys everything. The film features the voices of Natalie Allen Lind as Wonder Woman, Chandler Riggs as Superman, Nat Wolf as Batman, RWBY mainstays reprising their roles include include Lindsay Jones as Ruby, Cara Burrell as Wise, Aaron Zek as Blake, and Barbara Dunkelman as Yang. Um, other actors include Ozioma Akaga as Vixen, Jen Brown as Pyra, <laughs> Tiana Camacho as Glinda, Aaron Desmuki as Oscar, Jason Douglas as Jock, David 
Irigo Jr. as The Flash, and Rolf uh, Samantha Ireland as Nora, Miles Luna as Juan, maybe? Uh, Shannon McCormick as, McCormick as Professor Ospin, Neith Omli Wren, uh, Tara Platt as Callie, uh, <clears throat> Ginny Tirado as Green Lantern, and True Valentio as Cyborg. And uh, so apparently, it says here, uh, created by the late Monty Ohm, or Alm, RWBY is the first Western produced anime series distributed in Japan and has since become an instant hit branching into various media. Last year, DC Comics published an RWBY Justice League miniseries that more than likely inspired some clue, uh, cues or elements for this animated project. So we can expect that on 4K and Blu-ray in spring. Yeah, this is the first time I've even heard about this. Yeah. I don't even, I don't know what RWBY is, <laughs> except that it's the thing I just read. Yeah. <laughs> even bringing up animated, uh, you know, one of the things that'll be nice is you and I will have more time to go back for the animated films. I know. During this transition. During this transition. Well, maybe. I was, I just was going telling, <laughs> yeah, I was telling uh, our, our friend. wants to exist. On, yeah, I was telling uh, our our buddy Pud Triple Three over on Twitter. We were talking, and I said, uh, you know, we went from doing a news episode every three weeks to doing one every three days. Yeah, since since God took over, I don't know how much more I can handle. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be real. I mean, anyway, <laughs> worst case, we get some more time to to do some. Uh, to to go back to some media we didn't we didn't get to yeah that's not the worst yeah a lot of those anime movies are fantastic hey what would you think if they actually did uh Snyder Cut two but just did it as animated or retroscoped or something you mean rotoscope rotoscope yeah that's the one um not I I would take it but I'd rather it be live action me too I'm just talking affordability here yeah. Would you uh, would you be in the because um, there will be two camps if it happened? Mm-hmm. No, this isn't what I wanted. Camp or the I'm going to watch it anyway because I want the story. A um, little bit of both. I'd watch it because I want the story, but it'll never quite be the same. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like a date you ruined in college. <laughs> we'll never quite know what would have happened. Once you cut her ankle with that big toenail, you should have clipped when you got out of the shower before the date. Lesson learned, but God knows what was lost. <laughs> it's never actually happened to me, but it, it's always been a fear. <laughs> so that's a good preemptive fear. <laughs> I actually do know someone that's happened to. Really? Well, I mean, it just ruined the night, but yeah, it was, it was a physical injury. <laughs> like, yes, that. Yes, toenails can actually harm you. Yeah. Especially in such a capacity. I mean, I've cut myself with my toenails, not realizing that one was long enough to, to you know, mm. be a problem. And I'm pretty sure I've cut my wife. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, these things happen. They do. They do. But no, I mean, it, it's not pure speculation. I, I do literally know of a situation where someone... Injured another person in the uh, in the act, and and the act was cut short. Ah, well, I wasn't talking about the act, you know. I uh, I was mostly just talking about like cuddling and watching Angel or something, you know. Well, you know, see, in that case, um, they're they're not physically that different. Yeah, you still got toes rubbing up, rubbing up against uh, ankles. Yeah, you yeah, know? you're still you're still close. You're still pressing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People be smashing. Do <laughs> you have anything else you'd like to talk about on this episode, Jason? No, no, I guess not. Okay. I just, um, I, I'm sad for my own private reasons, but I'm, I'm not despondent about the future. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's the recap for me. Yeah. I kind of feel similarly, I guess. Anyway, that's all, uh, that's all we have for now. Thank you so much for listening and we'll be back again soon to reach out to us 
you can email us at dconscreen at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram and Twitter at dconscreen. We're on Facebook as well. Until next time, keep some DC on your screen. Feel free to send me the uh, clips of the uh, Man of Steel scene. You know the one. I'll cry with you. Our intro music is by Jason Goss and Michael Shackelford. Michael's band, Galactic Engineers of Magnetic Sounds, or GEMS, can be found on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. Visit DCOnScreen.com to find our Patreon, merch, contact information, and every episode of the show for free, including crossovers we've done with other podcasts. DC On Screen is a maladjusted production. For more from me and Jason, including sketch comedy, vlogs, parodies, and our improvised web series Hey Guy, visit maladjusted.tv.